Yeah, what's up? This is Cheshire for Cheshire Plays Games. I'm gonna go play some Pokemon because Pokemon's really great. You should all play it. Yeah, boy. <laughs> uh, okay, look, I'm gonna try and do a deck tech for this, but the deck, uh, the 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 deck editor in Pokemon Online at the moment is broken for me, so I'm gonna have to do it this way, which is really confusing because it shows separate cards separately, and the scroll bar is absolutely horrible so let's let's just have a quick chat about what this deck does so we've got uh four beldum one matang and one uh, see see and four metagross so what metagross does is a geotech system so once during your turn before you attack you can attach a psychic or metal energy from your discard pile to your active pokemon uh the attacks on this don't matter too much, although I guess it is partially one of the main attackers of this deck. So we've got Giga Hammer for two metal and a colorless. It does 150 damage, and this Pokemon can't use Giga Hammer during your next turn. Uh, the GX ability of Algorithm, so for a single colorless, search your deck for up to five cards, put them into your hand, and then shuffle your deck, and then you can't use GX abilities after that. Uh, we are playing, funnily enough, one copy of regular old extend metagross the reason being here is because it's easy to power up for an attack so you can just chuck it out in front of stuff when you need to uh when your opponent kills it it's only going to take one prize card and it's got pretty hefty hp at 170. the other metagross has heftier hp at 250 but we will get there so he says as he checks this out because he forgot to bring up his chat I'm so sorry. Do, do, do. Something always goes wrong. It's always my fault. How is everyone anyway? You good? I'm good. Uh, so we have Meteor Mash for one metal energy. It does 60 damage, right? Pretty useless, but... Then the second time you use it and thereafter before applying weakness and resistance, it does an extra 60 damage. It is good. It is surprisingly good. Uh, so being able to hit something for 120, especially with all the fairy decks going around, is pretty good. There's not really any fire decks we have to worry about, and it does have a resistance to psychic. So pretty good in that respect. Speaking of, we are running one copy of Copycat Mimicure. This poor little Pokemon is, is pretty cute. If your opponent's Pokemon uses an attack that isn't a GS, GX attack during their last turn, you can use it as this attack. So, pretty much it's just copycat. As it says, you're just copying your opponent's attack to try and, you know, get in some uh, something tricky. It just depends on what's out there, to be honest. We're running two copies of course Tapu Lele GX if you want to buy these in paper I think the regular version is about $25 uh, this version I think is about 35 and this one's about 50 because that's the the rainbow rare version uh, and this is pretty much in every deck and it's usually two or three of in every deck you're not going to find less than that and it's because of wonder tag so when you play this Pokemon from your hand to the bench during your turn, then you can search for a supporter and put it into your hand. Don't worry about the GX ability, you're rarely going to use it to heal your bench Pokemon, uh, but that energy drive is also especially good in this particular deck. If you can power this up a lot, it's going to do 20 times the amount of energy attached uh, to both active Pokemon, yours and your opponent's. It isn't affected by weakness and resistance for this attack, which is slightly not great, but not terrible. Anyway, we do have a single copy of a Dusk Main Necrozma GX. This is an Ultra Beast with 190 HP for three colors energy. It has Claw Slash for 60, which is not great. It's pretty bad. Like, it's just three energy for 60 attack is has a pretty weak ability. Uh, but the secondary attack is pretty good. So we got Meteor Tempest that does 220 for four energy. That's three metal and one colors. But you have to discard three energy attached to this Pokemon, which knocks out pretty much almost everything in the format. Uh, chuck on a, a, a band, a choice band, and it's doing, what, 250? So it is pretty much knocking out anything. 
The GX ability, which is Sun's Eclipse for 250 years for 3 metal. Um, you can only use this if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. Now, we, we probably should actually up this Duskmane across meta 2. Unfortunately, again, because the deck builder is broken for us, we can't actually add any extras, which is horrible. We are running one Prism Star Soul Galeo. 168 piece, pretty cool. Uh, Radiant Star is interesting, so for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon, sorry, for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a metal energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like. So it can be used as, uh, I guess, a pseudo um, turbo energy replacer, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then we have Corona Impact, which is 4 metal for 160 damage. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. 160 damage from an attack is pretty good. Uh, now, what makes this difficult about not having the deck builder is explaining this. The 4-1-4 line. So, that's because we're running 4 rare candy. So choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a stage 1 or 2 card that evolves from that Pokemon in your hand, then you can put that card on top of the basic Pokemon. It counts as evolving that Pokemon. Pretty awesome. Uh, we are running a four, I believe, Ultra Balls for good, obvious reasons. Uh, we're running an order pad here. Flip a coin if heads such your deck for an item card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, shuffle your deck. We've got heaps of items in this deck, so it can pretty much find us anything that we really need. Uh, what we most are looking for is our rare candies. We're running one power pad so that we can shuffle two supporter cards from the discard pile back into our deck. We are running a few nest balls. And I can't remember the exact number. I think it's two. And that's just so that we can get basic Pokemon back onto the bench. See, it just it makes it so messy. Uh, max potions. We're running four max potions. Heal all damage from one of your Pokemon. If you do, discard all energy attached from that Pokemon, which is fine because that's, again, why we're running Metagross. Because Metagross can just get those energies from the discard pile back onto our active Pokemon without any troubles. We are running one Field Blower. Uh, it's not as useful in this new rotated format as it was. It's still good. But it's just, it just depends on the deck, really. Let's be honest. We're only running one Rescue Stretcher because we don't really need more than one, although I need to be tinkering with it a bit. Once the deck builder is fixed, I'll be able to tinker with these decks a little bit more to make them a bit more consistent. I don't like them at the moment. Acrobike has been reprinted into standard for Pokemon, and that is look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand and discard the other. So we can use this to pitch, say, an energy into a discard pile or some sort of useless supporter that we don't need at the time or whatever it might be. Rarely are you going to be throwing a Pokemon into your discard pile, but that's why we've got Rescue Stretcher. We are running a Volkner here. Um, this is an interesting one because we don't run, obviously, any electricity energy because we're not an electric deck. But this is, again, we don't have Skylar, which searches for um, a trainer card. Skylar is now rotated, and as that's the case, this is just another way for us to find our rare candies, which we'll probably end up taking out at some point. We are running for Gushma. That's just simply so that we can switch stuff out from our opponent's bench and maybe our own as well. We are running... I think... I think we're running two Lily, although it might be four. I, I, maybe it's just one. We've only got one by the looks of it. Deck, not having a deck builder makes this really hard to try and do a deck deck on. Draw cards until you have six in your hand. If it's your first turn, draw until you have eight cards in your hand instead. A very, very good draw card supporter. Speaking of good draw card supporters, definitely better than N is Cynthia. Shuffle your hand into your deck and draw six cards. We're running four of those, of course. I've been testing Cirrus Prism Star. It's real bad. It's it's not a great, it's not a great uh, card, so we'll probably end up taking this out once we can. Once the deck builder gets fixed by TPCI. We're running, of course, a Judge. Um, I've been fooling around with Judge in a lot of different decks, and Judge is real good. 
I think that also for this, the fact that it has a Beltum in the background is kind of cute. <laughs> uh, but Judge is, uh, each player shuffles their hand into his or her deck and then draws four cards. So if you play it on your first turn, you're limiting the amount of cards your opponent is going to have in their hands, which is a fantastic. We're of course running to Choice Band, which does an extra 30 damage against your opponent's active GX Pokemon. Don't worry about the EX part, EXs are gone. So that's pretty much this particular deck, and we're going to take it for a spin a little bit and see how we go. Again, I've been really enjoying Pokemon. Um, still playing Magic, obviously. It's still doing deck techs and stuff, but uh, Pokemon's my side thing. I may have coffee thanks to my beautiful partner. Love coffee. Used to be a massive tea drinker, actually. Now I'm a, I'm a dirty, dirty, dirty coffee drinker. All right, cool. So we're gonna build them. That's good. Uh, again, Tapu Lele's. You don't want to put them out as your starting Pokemon. You want to use them for full effect, which means popping them on the bench during your turn. So what are we up against? What is this? Okay, Zorak Pod maybe? Zorak... Ooh, an Ivysaur. I don't... I don't know what we're playing. I've not seen this deck yet. I've been playing for weeks and I haven't seen this deck. Alright. So this could be Zorak Pod. Uh, or something different that I don't know about. And that's really weird. Chocolate. Any time now, opponent. Yeah, we'll chuck the soggle out. Again, not real sure what our opponent's playing, but I'm sure we'll find out. On oh, fan club, okay. Searching for, what was that? An execute and a Zora? Hmm. This is some sort of execute deck? Oh, does that mean a Lolan? Oh, what's it called? A Lolan Executor? Wish I could remember what that deck did. I don't know. Hmm. Well, that's going to make things very interesting. Uh, Alright, so we are going to chuck down a Tapalele here. Yes, we want to go searching for a Cynthia so that we can draw ourselves some Kungwards. Grab bike, grab the Guzma, let the metal energy go into the discard pile because we don't need it. Speaking of things we don't need, twist band on you, and then pop our Cynthia so that we can draw some cards. Well, that wasn't great. Uh, that's even worse, to be honest. Oh, which one do we want? We got no rare candies. I think we'll take the Ultra Ball, actually. Then we'll just pass the turn. We can Core Beam here, I guess, but I don't think we really want to. There's only one supporter in the discard pile. I think we just pass the turn here. Don't show this again. Are you sure you want to end your attack without actually attacking? Yes. Peek 
King red card. Your opponent reveals their hand. Huh. You may have your opponent count the cards in their hand, shuffle those cards in their deck, and then draw that many cards. Yeah, okay. I actually cracked a secret rare of one of these recently, and I just looked at it and went, that looks kind of crap. <laughs> but I guess it's kind of good, because you get to see your opponent's hand, which is unusual for Pokemon now. Make me shuffle my hand in. Because it doesn't matter to me. Thank you! Oh yeah, that's not too bad. Could have been worse. Oh, they couldn't do anything. Nice, okay. Let's chuck you down. Hmm. I guess we take the Cynthia here. We don't need the Ultra Ball. We'll let it go away. Uh, Psychic Energy. Do we want to attach that anywhere? I guess to you, just in case. Cynthia. <laughs> exactly what we don't want. We've got our rare candy, but we don't... We didn't draw a... Uh, hmm. Metagross. Is it going to matter? Okay, let's... It is. Let's retreat. I know what we're doing now. I got it. I got it. I'm so smart. Oh. Uh, let's pitch. I kind of wanted an, another Belden, to be honest, but uh, I think I'm going to pitch the field blower of the Belden. Go and get our nice shiny Metagross. Use our super rare candy. Because <laughs> it's a secret rare, get it? It's super rare. No? Okay. Touch energy from this card to the Lele. Hit our opponent. Smack them in the face for only 40, which is fine. I'm just kind of worried about this because once it evolves, I think I'm going to have some problems. Which should be fine because I can just retreat. Hmm, actually, we don't want to retreat, do we? I can Guzma chuck an energy on this. And then retreat this Beldum and bring out my Tapu Lele and just smack this in the face. It's only got 50 HP, so... Our opponent obviously wants to keep this around. For whatever reason. Roadblock, maybe. Yes, my pretty. Keep putting basic Pokemon onto your bench. Alrighty, let's do this, shall we? Uh, let's Guzma for you. Switch for our Beldum. Uh, then we'll use Metagross. Get our Metal Energy onto the Beldum. Retreat our Beldum. For our Tapu Lele GX. Smash our opponent. For a nice cool 80 damage. Take a prize. Take a prize, boys! Tonight we're eating fried Pokemons. Oh, I hear they're delicious. But definitely not nutritious, you know what I'm saying. So, hmm. Shiny Venus Venusaur? Does anyone remember what Shiny Venusaur does? I don't. I should have. I don't. That was a good draw. I like that. Emptied your hand and then Cynthia. Nice. Ultra Ball. Okay. That's a cool looking Ray Candy. I like that. From the new set. <laughs> Except we missed what Arab had grabbed. Damn it. That's right. I guess they grabbed Zorak.
Yep. All right, cool. So we have to worry about this. Um, the resistance doesn't matter to our Tapu Lele, which is nice. But uh, the fact that our opponent can just smash us with some big damage when they want to uh, is a little bit worrying. Geotech! Uh, I guess... Yeah, we'll grab another Beldum. And then smash him! Smash him good! Yeah, take that mutt. Just love this foil effect. Slow shine across the card is kind of lazy. It's not even like a procedurally generated foil effect or anything like that. Like, all of the foil effects are pretty much the same except on different types of cards. Like, this one here is the same as this one. You can tell. But this is obviously different because because it's a rainbow rare. They're like, alright, well the rainbow rares will have a go this way instead. Um, which is just a transparency mask. Basically. Here we are. Masters of the universe. It's actually princes of the universe. Like, whatever. Get it? Alright. It has a share button. Nice. I likes it a lot. So that's what, is that, what I was saying about being careful because, you know, you take a lot of damage from Zora and we don't, we don't actually want our Tapu Lele to die. Lucky for us, we don't need for our Tapu Lele to die. Um, what I do want to be a bit wary about though is what I do here because uh, I guess we just retreat for the Solgaleo. Pitching a single metal energy because it's not going to matter. Uh, we can then... There we go. Heal up full. Then we get a Cynthia. Because we knew that we probably wouldn't get another rare candy, which is what we really need. It's where these decks are just not as consistent uh, as the, the prior format. Previous format, everything was pretty damn consistent, which is great. Two, three. Uh, we've only got two in there. Okay, sure. Uh, we're going to just attach them all to Dustmane. I'm already noticing what this deck actually needs because this is very high retreat cost of three. And as you can see, we now have only a psychic energy left in our discard pile, which we can attach to this this big boy, which is fine. In fact, what we probably should have done was just attach the uh, the two metal to this, and then try to draw into a metal energy. But there's no guarantees from anything we've got in our hand that that's even going to happen. Um, we can max potion, which is nice to strip this and then heal it back up to full to buy us another turn if we want to do it that way. But what we really need here is uh, Guzma to stay in our hand so that we can just switch out for, say, the Alolan Executor. Um, just destroy it while we can. It's got an experience share on it, so obviously our opponent was hoping that we'd kill the Zorak, and if we do, they can, you know, scatter the, the energy onto it. Doesn't do just basic energy, does it? I haven't read it. When you're attacked with Pokemon, you may move one basic energy card. Oh, okay. What about you? 
Three basic energy cards. Well, why are you running these then? You're obviously running some basic energy. Yeah. Just not enough, mate. Just not enough. And now I'm out of coffee again. Coffee! Most delicious thing ever. Ever. Alright, let's... Yep, let's bring up your Alola Vakuto. Uh, let's do your tech. Almost like discotech, but not. I'm a full O tech. Heal. Uh, I guess we just Meteor Tempest here. I know, I know, I know. Um, we have to discard three energy, but that's actually part of our plan here anyway. We do have a Lily in our hand, so... Yep, cool. That made it even better. I mean, at the very, very worst, we can do 60 damage next turn uh, by Claw Slash. By slashing with the claws. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Roboto. Goblin Electromancer, what? Why did people even want that reprinted? Didn't need to be. Should be interesting. Uh, once during your turn, after you flip any coins for an attack, you may ignore all results of those coins. Begin flipping those coins again. You can't use this more than you can't use more than one victory star ability per turn. This is an actual reprint from Black and White. Uh, I don't know what our opponent's using it for. Probably, I'd be guessing for Draco Media, maybe. Flip a coin for each, yeah, for each grass, yep. I thought as much. Okay, cool. We're going to chuck a Metagross down. It's the other, other Metagross. Yeah, no. Why not, man? I got it, okay. This is what we were saying about, you know, potentially only being able to do 20 points of unfortunate damage. I'm going to call it unfortunate. Oh, you know what we could do? Uh, let's ditch the Lele. And actually, probably Volkner. Volkner's kind of crap. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, no, we must have already gotten rid of the... Uh... Oh, boy. Did we already get rid of... Yeah, there's a boulder. I guess we just haven't drawn it yet. Must be now prizes. That's fine. The stage in between Baldum and Metagross... That looks real crap. I mean, Beldum itself looks kind of crap, to be honest. But, I digress. It, it's funny, because it's an eye, and it's the claw. When you look at this, it's literally the eye and the claw. So essentially, what you're trying to tell me... We can't actually do that, can we? I'm trying to figure out how we can view the bottom card again. Eh, it doesn't matter. What you're saying is that it basically grows from a single piece of itself 
which is interesting. Pokemon, you be weird. You be real weird. Um, speaking of, in the VGC, Metagross was actually quite a stable of, I think not last season, but the season before. I didn't play last season. I actually have not been uh, playing VGC regularly as I used to. Just time commitments and stuff, you know. It doesn't make sense to do it. Uh, we are just going to call a slash here. There it is, a Metang. That's what I was looking for. Which is funny, because you got to think that it went from, like, somehow being some sort of, like, hovering, flying Pokemon. Into being, like, a ground... A ground-based pounding Pokemon. I don't know. I get it. Pokemon's weird. Ooh, what are they going to do here? Oh, oh, Bulbasaur's evolved to a Venusaur. Each basic grass energy attached to your Pokemon provides two grass energy. You can't apply more than one jungle totem ability at a time. Okay, sure. So... You've effectively just got a lot of grass here. Two, four, you've got six, six energy attached to your Venusaur. Effectively. And three here for whatever reason. Four technically. With none of those being dark, so you can't even use your GX ability. Ooh, how did I do that? <gasps> oh, 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 you can just you can just rotate it. Oh, wow, okay, sure. Um Hmm. But well, I mean hmm. And then hmm. I guess we just put the psychic energy over here. Meteor Tempest! See ya! We just won the game! Collect the last two prizes. Avicatori! Cool. Well, that was that deck. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there and switch back over to the YouTubes. Try that again. Considering it's like six o'clock. Huh. Let's try that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the deck tech, and thank you very much for hanging. And uh, come follow me on YouTube.com/forward/slash Cheshire Plays Games.